Natural selection. Natural selection is the process whereby organisms better adapted to the environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. What this means is that organisms that actually reproduce or have a higher chance of reproducing will pass on their favourable traits. For example, the peppered moth. You will notice two pepper moths on this tree, a dark one and a light one. During the Industrial Revolution, there was more pollution, which meant the tree's bark became darker. That meant that the darker pepper moths had an increased chance of survival because the birds couldn't see them as well, so they were eaten less. So this would be before the Industrial Revolution. You can see that you, the darker pepper moths stand out a lot more, hence the birds ate them, while the lighter pepper moths had a better chance of surviving, passing on their traits of being lighter. As a result, more and more lighter coloured pepper moths appeared. During the Industrial Revolution, however, the pollution from all the machinery and factories darkened the back on the trees. As a result, the lighter varieties of pepper moth stood out more and they were eaten rather than the darker colours. As a result, more and more darker pepper moths appeared. This is natural selection. It is the possession of favourable traits, traits that increase your chance to reproduce, that are passed on to the next generation, whilst if your traits stop you from reproducing, your traits will not be passed on to the next generation. This is the process through which evolution works. Hence, as we stated before, natural selection is the process whereby organisms better adapted, so in the case of the pepper moths, those are the colours, to the environment to tend to survive and produce more offspring. We can see natural selection in other places as well. We know that gibbons, humans, chimps, gorillas and orangutans have a very distant shared ancestor. And we can see similarities. However, each of these species is adapted differently for survival. Take the gorilla for example. You can see that it has big forearms, it has a big protruding jaw, it has large teeth large canines and these features will help a gorilla survive. In particular you will notice it has much larger teeth and a large mandible. The gorilla's diet means that it requires this large mandible and large teeth. Without it, it, doesn't, it is not able to eat successfully. Thus, the teeth are an adaptation that help the gorilla to survive. Adaptation is the process of change by which an organism or species becomes better suited to its environment. Hence the gorilla, if it has a large mandible, is more likely to survive. Other adaptations of the gorilla other is the large nuchal crest. That's the ridge on the back of the skull. This is in part to support the large neck, but also the way the gorilla walks. This image shows a Neanderthal skull and a human skull. You will see that the Neanderthal also has a large jaw by comparison to the human jaw. This is an adaptation again to food and other situations. You will also notice that the, that the human skull has a larger forehead. This is a human adaptation because we have a much more developed frontal cortex.